I've got a phone here from Oppo it has just been announced like literally less than an hour ago but I've actually been using it properly since mid-January I've taken it on a race track through a snowstorm and quite literally across the world and yeah study for just how fast mid-range phones have improved over the last few years so now that I can finally talk about this I feel like a weight has been lifted let's do this for anyone wondering this is what was sent to me a big cardboard box inside of which two things the first of all the Oppo and code free airboats which I've also been testing alongside the phone and the device itself this is the Reno 3 Pro but a different Realm 3 Pro 2 the one you might have heard of that'll make more sense in a minute it's nice presentation I appreciate the extra effort versus just having a plain black box but of course more important is what's inside so there's a sleeve with instruction manuals and a clear TPU case standard stuff but it is good to see a fast 30 watt charger and not just a USB-C cable but a pair of actually decent quality earphones now you might have already heard this name before Reno 3 Pro and that's because Oppo released Reno 3 Pro in China December last year but this phone is the international version of the Reno 3 Pro and it's a completely different device with that out the way then there's a lot to talk about here but I'd be lying if I said the focus was anything but the six cameras dotted around the phone they're not what I expected but I'll come to this the Reno 3 Pro is priced at around $430 so with that in mind my first impression was that it feels okay I'm a fan of the Aurora blue coloring on the back and the Reno is yet another reminder that every time I think I've seen every possible way to do a smartphone gradient finish I'm wrong with the Reno 3 Pro the light rays start from the bottom red corner and kind of shoot outwards I would have personally preferred a glass finish but the silver lining to these plastic materials is that the phone is featherweight considering that it has a 4020 25 milliamp hour battery in it and let's talk about that for a second as I mentioned I've taken this phone everywhere for two months and in that time it hasn't died on me once the phone takes about 20 minutes to charge 50% or just over 50 minutes to charge 100 which is good but the battery life has been amazing and in my travels with it a couple of other things that become clear I like the display I've watched entire seasons of Netflix shows on it and with 1080 by 2400 resolutions spread across a 6.4 inch screen size it's relatively crisp with discoloration only at extreme angles the highlight is the super AMOLED tech and assisted by a piece of opposed own software the colors even in third-party apps are given an extra pop it is a little strange though that this pop doesn't translate to the phone's user interface and that's because the company has made the purposeful decision to tone down the saturation of their icons and wallpapers as that supposedly reduces eye fatigue it's actually the opposite direction to Samsung who've just dialed up the saturation of their icons but I don't know each of their own I mean what would you prefer just for a bit of fun really I pulled out the Oppo R11 and upper mid-range phone from about two and a half years ago and it's kind of astronomical the jump that's been made in this segment in particular you'll also notice the dual punch hole cameras previously seen on the likes of the Samsung Galaxy S10 plus and I said this before for the hole punch I'm personally a fan like every time I look at this phone from the front I've had that subtle reassurance that I am actually looking at a modern sophisticated piece of technology in my eyes it is so much better than a notch the other thing I noticed while watching shows on the Reno was this little bar on the side you can turn it off if you don't like it but the more I started using it the more I found it to be weirdly exciting as of now it only supports a few applications but it feels like a taste of how smartphone multitasking should be you can reply to a message without leaving a full screen video or browse the 
files on your phone and even play your own videos within this mini window plus if you drag an app from this bar it'll automatically open up in split screen view on that note that color os 7 the software skin operate puts on top of android 10 here is actually been a really nice surprise though raised to wake feature works quickly which when combined with face unlocking means that getting into your phone is effortless and there are visual flourishes throughout like the fancy power of screen or scrolling indicators that react to velocity and a massive selection of live wallpapers that contextually respond to scrolling what I wasn't expecting is the vast control it gives you over icons customization that rivals third-party launches which when you think about it it kind of makes sense Oppo would rather you stick to their launch or then switch to a third-party one but at the same time it's rare for customization like this to be pre-baked into a phone also the dark mode here is one of the best when you turn it on it covers the 200 most used apps everything from the play store to youtube to the file manager to instagram and saves more battery now just before i get to the cameras worth noting is performance because we're quite used to seeing qualcomm powered mid-range phones but opera i've gone with mediatek instead but i guess the silver lining is that this is world's first smartphone to use their helio p95 chip it takes the Helio P90 that you might have seen last year and then it bumps up the GPU and the connectivity it's not a game-changing improvement more of a case of keeping up with the times and they paired that with 8 gigs of RAM and pretty generous 256 gigabytes of storage I found that 2D and 2.5D games there was a non-issue but it's good to see the even Call of Duty Mobile was fine on high settings there were a couple of even heavier games I tried once that might not have been as well optimized and for them frame rate was lower still playable but not 60 frames per second. Smooth oh yeah this Dolby Atmos sound here as well it is rich it is loud but the further it is coming from only a single speaker does limit the spatial effect anyways let's address the elephant in the room cameras so you might remember back in January I teased this on Twitter world's first phone with the 44 megapixel punch hole camera well in case the penny hasn't dropped yet this is that so to start with we have a 44 megapixel plus a 2 megapixel front camera which has impressed me it's got quite a crisp output turning out full 44 megapixels selfies but like it's selfie you're probably not going to be printing it out on a two paper and hanging it on your wall probably so resolution is less important than the actual quality of the image as well as the camera mode so it was good to see that portrait mode works well with good edge detection thanks to that second depth sensing camera and you can take night mode selfies which you can probably imagine I got very excited about and it works like the difference between a normal, non-night mode shot in the dark and a night mode shot in the dark should give you an idea of just how powerful smartphone imaging software has become and this becomes even more impressive as we move to the rear cameras the night mode on the Reno 3 Pro and frankly shocked me for starters there's the normal night mode which captures for around 4 seconds and significantly brightens up a nightscape but something I haven't seen seen on a mid-range smartphone before is tripod mode that lets you plant your phone down on a tripod or just rest it against something stable and it'll spend 30 seconds turning night and today seeing this phone in action gave me the same goosebumps feeling that I had when taking a look at thousand dollar flagships last year it also has ultra dark mode which uses all manner of software magic to create bright photos even standing in just one lux of light almost pitch black the photos just generally have been good they'll come out as 16 megapixels by default but here's 
where it gets interesting if you tap on the settings menu you can switch up to capturing full 64 megapixel shots but then if you go into the pro model of the camera you can turn on ultra hd which shoots a 108 megapixel photo was using a technology called sub pixel interpolation it's effectively estimating extra pixels it's an interesting concept but in my testing I should get the best results from 64 megapixel I'll let you be the final judge on that one though the company is also quite proud of their 2x zoom and their ultra wide cameras and what they do well is they keep colors fairly consistent as you move between them so this is me bit by bit zooming through the entire focal range and you almost don't realize it's changing lenses and you can still snap a good photo at 5x zoom the video quality is okay it's about what you'd expect which is to say if you use it well the ceiling for what you can get is high what I did think was cool though is that when you head into video and you get an ultra steady mode and to dial it up even more ultra steady pro which uses the wider angle camera I mentioned that I took this phone to a racetrack well a big part of why is to use this ultra steady feature considering there's no actual optical image stabilization it's impressive what they've done with software alone and finally the phone's got an optical in display fingerprint scanner it's got a monster of a sim tray supporting two sims plus a microsd card and it's got a headphone jack so yeah that's the reno 3 pro international edition this has been fun thanks for watching and see you on my next video